In this video, we're going to see how to integrate Bootstrap and Spring Boot. So Bootstrap is a library used frequently for web rendering. It, can, it contains a bit of JavaScript and CSS and images and many other things. What's nice is that you can make a really nice looking application quickly, regardless of the underlying infrastructure by using something like Spring Boot. And it's easy to implement as well. So this is a nice UI library that we can have in our application. Now, where does, where does Bootstrap fit compared to everything else? Let's start by considering what our application will eventually look like. We will likely have some type of uh, persistence mechanism, probably a database, could be a NoSQL database or a traditional SQL database. On top of that, I have three blocks here in dark blue that represent what we're going to do with Spring Boot, which is essentially the DAO the service, and also the controller layer. We know that we need to have some type of HTML view that the user can look at and interact with. And Timeleaf is a library that interacts between both Spring Boot and also our HTML page, and it essentially makes our Java data available on that HTML page. That's what Timeleaf is doing. It's just making the stuff available. It doesn't have a really big component library like we'd like to see in something like Bootstrap. So Bootstrap comes in to be that HTML rendering library that we're going to use. Now one easy way to integrate Bootstrap is with something called a content delivery network where essentially there's data sitting cached several places around the world and we can just kind of reference that data. So I'm going out here to Bootstrap CDN so that we can link from this page, link from our page to this page here. So first of all, you see at the time of this recording, 413 is the most up-to-date version. So we're simply going to uh, grab a couple of items here. We're going to copy. It looks like we already have this copy to, yep, there we go, copy to clipboard. And now I'm going to run back to my HTML page that I made earlier. And what I need to do, so with this content delivery network, I'm simply going to my HTML page and I'm reaching out to where they have the Bootstrap libraries available. So this looks like a link and that link is going to need to live up in the head section of my document. So we'll simply go up here and paste just like so. It's a bit long, but nonetheless, that'll work for us. Now let's run back and see what else we need to do. Uh, for the JavaScript, we're going to go ahead and copy this guy. There we go, copy to clipboard. And now I'm going to return back to my page and I need to add a script tag for this. So we'll say script and then SRC equals, open double quote and then paste and then we'll close the tag and then we'll end it with a, a closing tag as well. So a close script tag. Now let's look at a simple proof of concept that we can use. I just went to get, get bootstrap.com and I'm clicking on get started. Now up at the top, I'll search for input because I know we have a couple of these and I, I come to input group. There's some things here where we can do like a, a prep end with an at symbol like we see here. That one looks pretty simple. We could also use kind of a, a label and then a text area that follows. You see that's all as one unit. The nice thing is all we need to do is go down here, right click and choose copy. And then we can put that into our page. So copy and back to our development environment. And let's take something like latitude. So I will paste that nugget that I have above. Okay, and we'll change the label here to latitude, just like so. Well, we don't need the colon because I think there's a enough difference, uh, enough difference in the in the color where we don't need the colon. Okay, uh, input type equals text. Let's see how that compares down here. So basically, we're taking this one line and we're replicating it up above here. So input type equals text. We got that. Class, we're not worried about. That's a bootstrap thing. Uh, label, not too worried about. Looks like what we can do then is we can just go ahead and take these other attributes, name and th field, that we used in a very simple time leaf tag, as you see here. Let's go ahead and add that into our input tag that we got with bootstrap up above. So you see this is interesting because we're mixing the class and the CSS information from bootstrap with the attributes that are described by our Timeleaf library. Both of them are using the standard HTML input tag, so we don't have any kind of uh, we don't have any kind of conflict on the tag there. Now we no longer need this latitude element, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it and save. Let's see what happens when we put this in the debugger. 
I've restarted the application and I've refreshed the page and take a look. You might remember that latitude used to look like longitude description and plant as we see below. But after implementing Bootstrap, it has this more comfortable Bootstrap look and feel where it doesn't look so much like an old school HTML page. But what's more important is that we've confirmed with just a couple of lines, we've been able to integrate Bootstrap into an existing application. In this case, just happens to be a Spring Boot application, but really could be any application. Now, the next test is if I put a latitude value in here, and we'll go with 39.75, will that actually be sent over to the server? So let's go with 3975 minus 8450. Description will say a beautiful specimen. Uh, plant ID will say 12. Just a couple things we can remember. Now I'm going to choose submit and we notice Eclipse lights up orange, which is good news. We go ahead and we go to the debug perspective. Here's the real tell. If we look at specimen DTO, what is the latitude? and I come over, this is probably easiest to expand, and we see that sure enough the latitude is 39.75. So by adding Bootstrap, our Time Leaf and our Spring Boot integration still works the same way. And that's because Bootstrap is essentially just a combination of CSS and JavaScript and some HTML elements, and Time Leaf in this case is just adding some attributes to some existing HTML elements so they both work well together. So I hope this video has been helpful. In the next video, we'll see how to do a nav bar with Bootstrap. I look forward to seeing you then.